The Swamp Thing series was resurrected in 1982 to coincide with the release of the Swamp Thing movie, written and directed by Wes Craven. Of course, DC hoped the movie would be a smash hit, like the previously released Superman movie. They also hoped a successful Swamp Thing movie would translate into an equally successful comic book series. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. The movie was a train wreck, but the relaunched Swamp Thing series did well enough that it wasn't immediately cancelled. The first 19 issues of that series, which were almost entirely written by Martin Pascoe and illustrated by Tom Yates, are highly overlooked and overshadowed by what followed once both creators left the series. For the most part, this is a solid run. However, it does get somewhat messy and convoluted in places. And, later in the series, it keeps restating the plot developments over and over to ensure the reader can follow what's going on. Admittedly, this was a standard practice for comic books, but these summaries took up a lot of space, sometimes as much as three or four pages of a 17-page story. That's quite significant. The first 13 issues amount to one continuous story. The plot revolves around a girl the Swamp Thing saves from being murdered by her father. As the series progresses, we learn the girl possesses supernatural power and she's actually the messiah for the Antichrist. With the help of an extensive supporting cast, Swamp Thing stops this girl from bringing about the apocalypse. The story begins quite strong and it's ambitious, but as it progresses and as more characters are introduced, it does get a bit messy. To be honest, some of the plot twists seem like the writer was stalling for time. It reads like he thought he had enough story for a year-long series, but then he discovered he had run dry about halfway through. Certainly, part of this can be attributed to the nature of serial storytelling. That being said, this story goes on a little longer than necessary. The following two issues are a fill-in story that are quite terrible. It may have been an inventory story that had been sitting around for years, and it was published because they had nothing else for the next two months. Moving on. Pasco returned for another three issues before deciding his schedule was too strained to continue. He left the series to focus on animation work rather than comic books. He was also joined by a new art team, Steve Bissett and John Tottleben. While the prior regular artist, Tom Yates, was good, Bissett and Tottleben were a perfect combination for a horror-related title. The addition of these two artists greatly enhanced Pasco's scripts. It was at this point the series began to dramatically change. To begin with, Matthew Cable and Abby Arcane are reintroduced, having been absent from the beginning. The intervening years between the last series and their reintroduction are explained, and the nature of their relationship is also established. They are now husband and wife, having been drawn together through shared trauma. The Sunderland Corporation, which had been established and explored through this series, takes a more active role in deciding Swamp Thing's future. Meaning, it's decided the Swamp Thing must die. Finally, and perhaps more importantly, Anton Arcane is brought back with a new batch of insect-based unmen. These three elements will be very important once the series changes hands with the 20th issue. While the preceding 16 issues had a minimal impact on the future of the comic, these three issues are definitely important. It may be the incoming writer, Alan Moore, had some input into these issues because there is a noticeable shift in tone. It is much darker and creepier, and the characters start to feel more alive. Again, part of this tonal difference is due to the art team, who seem to be able to translate beautifully grotesque imagery directly from their brains right onto the comic book page. It's an interesting transition. Of course, it's about to get even more interesting. Hello, and thanks for watching. Now, as you may have guessed, this is the beginning of a retrospective series looking at Swamp Thing from 1982, when the series was revived, to 2006, when the series was removed from the Vertigo imprint. Like the Ween and Wrightson years, I think of this as a distinct period in the character's history. I've broken this down into nine parts, one part for each writer on the series, although I'm going to try and condense it into six parts overall, with hopefully two or three parts posted every week so there's a lot of Swamp Thing for the next two weeks or so. Naturally, at the end, I'll post a complete video, which was my intent from the beginning. But there are those that like smaller chunks, so I thought I'd cater to both tastes. Now the intent of this series is to provide an overview, you know, chart the major developments and such. So these will be concise and, hopefully, thorough. But I won't be going in depth into the various storylines. That's something I'm reserving for a later time. This is more of a history and evolution of the character type of thing. 
So I think that's about it for now. All that's left to say is, please subscribe if you've not already. Also, like and comment in all that engagement stuff. That really helps these videos get more exposure, which is something I'd really appreciate at the moment. Finally, thanks to all the fine people you see displayed on the screen right now. Their support ensures this channel continues. Alright, that's enough from me. I'll see you in the next video. Until next time.